Welcome to our lecture online. Now here before us we have an interesting diagram. We have what we call the PVT services diagram for real substances, how real substances actually behave. And of course water would be slightly different but most other substances will behave like this. And so let's get a feel for this diagram because it does indicate and give us a quite a bit of information. Notice we have all three variables, state variables, pressure, volume, and temperature. Pressure increases going this way, volume increases going this way, and temperature increases going this way. Now notice there's some special points on this graph, so let's identify those. We have what we call the critical point. The critical point is the point at which no vapor can exist if the temperature exceeds that. So if we go in this direction beyond the critical point, vapor can exist there. Only gas can exist if the temperature is hot enough and the pressure is low enough. Secondly, we have what we call the triple point right here. That's the only point on the graph where you can have all three substances, solid, liquid, and vapor existing at the very same time. That usually happens at fairly low temperatures in this direction and fairly low pressures and the correct volume to allow that to happen. Now, the best way to think about this is to move along the isotherms. The lines here that will go across the graph here that represent a constant temperature as pressure and volume changes. At very high temperatures, you can see that we're in the gas phase and then as you increase the pressure, increase the pressure, increase the pressure, eventually the gas will turn into a solid, bypassing the liquid state. Carbon dioxide is one of those gases where it sublimates, going from solid to gas, and it, when you compress it enough, it goes from gas back to solid, bypassing that liquid state. So that's, that would be one example of that. You can then see as the temperature becomes sufficiently low and we increase the pressure, we go from a vapor state into a liquid state and then it goes into a solid state. Now notice also here there's a, re a region where liquid and vapor can exist at the same time. For example, you can have uh, a certain amount of the gas in liquid state and you can have a certain amount of gas in the vapor state, but as you then increase the pressure, eventually all the liquid will then be pushed into a solid. There's a small region here where you can see that you can have solid and liquid occurring at the same time before enough pressure will then push it into the solid form. Notice you have more of a step function. The lower the temperature, when you want to go from a liquid state into a solid state, it requires a very large change in the pressure. As you go up the graph out here with higher temperatures, the change tends to be more gradual. And then finally, when you come all the way down to the bottom here, below the triple line, notice this is the triple line here that goes right through the triple point. There, we go from a liquid into a solid state, and only you can only get a gaseous state if you allow the volume to become extremely large, and at some point, regardless of the size of the volume, you can only have liquid and solid if the pressure is sufficiently high. So that kind of explains the relationship between vapor, liquid, gas, and solid under the various temperatures, under the various pressures, and under the various volumes for a real substance. Hopefully that gives us a little bit of an idea. Perhaps it might have even confused you more because it takes a while of staring at this graph before it really becomes, starts to make sense. So take your time, take a look at this slowly, and the best thing to do again is move across the isotherms and see what happens, how the phase changes occur at various volumes and pressures for specific temperatures. And that would be the best way to look at this particular diagram. So try it, good luck, and hopefully it helps.